the mile record as well, Tim, uh, a few weeks ago. She did. That 4.13 mile was just science fictional. It was incredible, a 4.13 mile for a lady indoors. Many people just left open-mouthed and speechless at the quality of that performance from Dibaba. Again, this promises to be a fascinating race, Chris, although I fear the Africans uh, will dominate it and put the rest of the world in shade. I like to see... How do you defeat somebody like this who is so strong, so fast, so consistent? And indeed, to their credit, you have to say that the Ethiopians are consistent, aren't they, Chris? It's very, very rarely you get a, a bad performance from an Ethiopian in the middle or long distances. Uh, they had a disaster in the Olympic marathon in the men's race. None of them finished, but at the middle distances, they rule supreme. Well, we've already had one gold medal in the 3000 from Kajelcha from Ethiopia. Can Dababa or Defar make it an Ethiopian double? 15 laps of the track then. Let's uh, just keep an eye on the pace. It's uh, Saina from Kenya. It's not a household name who uh, moves to the front first of all. And uh, you can see straight away Dababa just uh, out for a, a bit of a stroll at the back, keeping well out of trouble. And it's, you can already see a very, very pedestrian pace. Yeah, Rogri there in third place, having a chopper stride, she's almost jogging, and uh, everybody gets impatient with this. And the big question mark in um, the minds of probably two-thirds of this field is, what do I do? Do I just keep jogging like this and avoiding heels and elbows and getting thumped around, or do I go to the front and stride out freely? Well, Steph Twell hits the front, and uh, Kudzilic there beside her, probably thinking, well, at least now I don't have to worry too much about what's going on behind. You watch the amount of traffic and... and bumping and barging that goes on through this next couple of laps for those in the pack. Well, Steph Twell out in the front there. Good to see uh, British representation in this race. Josephine Moultrie, the uh, lesser known of the two British athletes. She's just uh, two thirds of the way back. Who was second at the uh, Indoor Championships uh, a few weeks ago. Steph Twell in uh, second place there. So experienced, Steph Twell, but so unlucky over the years with all sorts of injuries. 80 seconds, nearly 81 seconds at 400. That is jogging. Well, for ladies like this, it's jogging. It's uh, probably about marathon pace for Paula Radcliffe. She could do uh, roughly 104 laps at this speed. And back still, in the day, anyway. Yeah, Sorry. back in the day, I was going to say. Maybe even still uh, today, she's still in uh, pretty good shape, isn't she, Paula? Mesaret Defar then uh, in the thick of that pack. Chep Kamoy as well. And the Barbie you can see left of picture just uh, continuing to just stay out of trouble. It's almost sort of strategy that Mo Farah adopts, isn't it? In these early laps just uh, at the back, almost as if they like to add to the challenge by picking off the runners as they start to pick up the pace. And it's maybe picked up slightly, but it's still very, very slow indeed. Well, it was almost two minutes at three laps. I mean, that's 80 seconds uh, per lap. Outdoors, that would be. 40 seconds per lap indoors. And at least now they're beginning to move a little bit more healthily and... Uh, Many of them will be grateful for that. It's gradually whittling down to two by two uh, format. Although running wide there towards the back is uh, Chepkwemoy. Interesting that Dababa describes uh, the 1500 as her favorite event. It's very special, she says. That's where her heart is, but she's just so devastating over the two distances. Indeed, the 5000 as well. And as you asked at the top of the program, what on earth do you do? What can you do? to damage somebody with such extraordinary talent and who never has an off day, almost never. Well, she's right at the back of the moment alongside uh, Joe Moultrie of Great Britain, who is a uh, personal best who is just 8.58. New name for me, Moultrie. She's uh, learning her trade here. Talk about being thrown in the deep end, the 25-year-old. It'll be very interesting to see how she can cope with things here, Joe Moultrie. Just being here is the big achievement. The experience is worth its weight in gold for an up-and-coming uh, middle-distance runner. Kudzetlich then from uh, Belarus in uh, second place with uh, Steph Twell just taking on duties there. And uh, there we can see Gonzeva de Barber just in the blink of an eye going from last to second place and just tucking in behind Steph Twell. And uh, Defar responding, just coming up onto the shoulder of Sina in fourth place. And Dibaba hits the front. I think she's had enough. She's decided this is way too slow. 3.51 for the first kilometre. I mean, that for the first 1,200, excuse me. And that is just so, so slow. And now the race is on. And, of course, I think Dibaba is thinking, this is just daft. We're jogging here for uh, lap after lap. I might as well get out there and just run the legs off them, which I know I can do. 
Well, Steph 12 bravely is uh, trying to respond and go with her, but she'll just keep winding it up to Barber. This is uh, certainly nowhere near full throttle. She'll just keep winding it up and winding it up and doing more and more damage. And uh, in the space of, what, one lap, 200 metres, you can see the field has stretched out extraordinarily. And she will just keep stretching and stretching and stretching. Interesting to watch uh, Debarba. She was glancing up the big screen to see if she could see what sort of damage she's doing behind her. She hardly needs to, really. Anyway, it's showing long jump, I think, at the moment. But uh, that gap is widening and widening, and Defar is being held back to some degree by Steph Twell now. If Defar and Sina want to have even a sniff at staying with uh, Debarba through these middle stages, Chris, they've got to get round Steph Twell. But the surge was so sudden for a couple of laps as uh, Debarba goes through there now with, what, seven laps to run that uh, the field spread-eagled and powerless. Well, if we accept that uh, the, the, the barber is going to go away again, it could be already less than halfway through looking at the battle for the minor medals. We haven't really mentioned uh, Shannon Roby yet. She's uh, starting to wait, make her way through the field. Yeah, it's back in sixth place, Robri. I think she's probably thinking more about the silver medal than she is about anything else. You know, even Defar, I'm surprised, hasn't covered this surge. And I saw Defar come back with her first race in many months in uh, Boston a few weeks ago, and she looked fantastic. I think she ran about 8.35 for 3,000. I'm really surprised she's allowed Debaba to just go like this without uh, any real significant challenge. And I mean, it's kind of ironic that it was Steph Twell who's uh, been the one who tried to go with it. Well, the gap has uh, actually narrowed a little bit now. And whether that's because De Barbara has just uh, eased off a bit or the others have just uh, regrouped. But Shannon Roby now into uh, fifth place, just trying to get back into that group. And De Barbara, who I thought would just keep going away and away, has been reeled in there. And uh, all credit to Steph Twell for taking on those duties. The question there for Steph Twell is how much has she paid for that? And already we're seeing Defar moving up into second place with uh, the Kenyan sign up also still there and uh, Shannon Robri there just sensibly making her way slowly but surely into that leading group. Let's just focus on Steph 12 for a moment. I mean, this is a brilliant, brilliant run from Steph. She's really giving a good account of herself back there in fifth place alongside Shannon Robri, as you say, Chris. Dibaba controlling things, just holding that gap at about 15, 17 metres, goes through there. That uh, time at two kilometres, 6.02. Well, I know she'll blast this uh, next three laps and three or four laps and will obviously go a long way under nine minutes, but uh, I fear for the others. Look at the way she's striding out there now, Chris, another acceleration. There's an element of fight leg to this. She seems to be surging and easing and surging and easing. Yeah, rope dope stuff, isn't it, as they say in the business? But uh, De Barbara again, another surge. And uh, Meseret Defar, she's looking up all the time to see how much damage she's doing, and the answer is quite a lot. Defar in second place. And uh, Steph Twell is starting to uh, find this a little bit punishing and is uh, slipping back. Shannon Robri now in uh, fourth place with Defar opening up a little bit of a gap. Good run from Costa there in the orange back in, what, fifth place. Defar is indeed chasing hard, although surely she can't close that gap. I mean, it's, what, 25 metres now? Betsy Siner back in third place. But uh, I just can't see Debarba being caught here now. She's got so much in reserve surging through towards two laps to go. This would be the bell outdoors. And look at that gap. And to do this to Defar, who's been in supreme shape, Chris, in recent weeks, uh, underlines the calibre of this run. It's hard to really gauge it because she's running on her own. She's in isolation, but she's just churning it out at something much quicker than the rest can manage. Well, it's like a training run, isn't it? And Defar is on the chase. Robri now uh, into uh, third place, but it's Ethiopia one, Ethiopia two, and Debarba, there's no doubt about who is going to win this, and she's going to make it a, an Ethiopian double coming through to take the bell. And will she put on a show for the last lap? Yes, she will, I think. 200 to go. Forget the time, it's far too pedestrian. That's gone. She's run so much more quickly uh, already this year. But it's the Ginzeba Debarba show, and what a treat for this Portland crowd. Shannon Robri still thinks she can reel in Meseret Defar. And now athletes being lapped, but De Barber never in doubt. De Barber into the home straight for the last time. Has a, what, 30, 40 metre advantage over her compatriot, Meseret Defar. It's gold again for Genzeba De Barber. She successfully retains her title. Meseret Defar in second place. And uh, a bronze medal, a worthy bronze for Shannon Robri, who gave it her all. But just as we predicted before the race started, 
It's the Ethiopia show, Genzeba de Barba adds yet another global title. She reigns supreme, and Meseret Defar has to settle for silver, silver and a worthy bronze for Shannon Robry. Well, what can you do about an athlete this superior? I was reading this morning about uh, Yolanda Balash, uh, Romanian high jumper back in the day, back in the uh, 50s, who was totally dominant. She was jumping some like 10 or 15 centimetres higher again and again than anybody else in the world. She was basically way, way ahead of her time. And I just get the feeling that's the case with uh, Genzebe de Baba here. The performances she's churning out, that 4.13 mile a few weeks back in Stockholm, the way she's running, that world record last summer outdoors, 3.50 in Monaco for 1,500 metres. And nobody else is able to get close to her. She's running the legs off the best of them. Hassan won the 1,500 metres yesterday. She was destroyed by this athlete in Monaco last summer. Brilliant, brilliant run, quite supreme.